The Vortex. We present Joan Greenwood, Richard Bryars, with Margaret Robertson and Rolf Lefevre in the play by Noel Coward, first produced at the Everyman Theatre Hampstead in November 1923, when the author played the part of Nicky. The Vortex. I'm expecting Mrs. Lancaster in at any moment now, ma'am. Thank you, Preston. We'll wait a little. Shall I get you some tea? No, thank you. We've already had some. Very good, ma'am. Give me a cigarette, Pawnee. They're in that box on the table. Uh, oh. Here you are, Helen. Thank you. <clears throat> it may be tiresome of me, but I think all this colouring is oppressive. You make such a fetish of house decoration, Pawnee. No, not at all, but I, I do like things to be good and right. Well, I don't consider the new frieze in your bathroom either good or right. How can you, Helen? It's too marvellous for words. Pirelli designed it specially for me. Personally, it would make me self-conscious to sit in a bath surrounded by frisky gods and goddesses, all with such better figures than mine. Well, I find it encouraging. This whole room is so typical of Florence. What way? Every way. Look at the furniture. Hmm. Little artificial, perhaps, but quite harmless. Dear Helen, you're such a loyal friend. I'm very fond of Florence. We all are. Oh, my God, look at that lampshade. I gave it to her last Christmas. Wasn't that a little naughty of you? I don't see why. It's extremely pretty. Too unrestrained. Such a bad example to the servants. What a hideous frame. Who's this boy? Tom Varian. You must have seen him. A Florence is past, present, or future? Present. He has that innocent look that never fails to attract elderly women. Don't be a cat. I wasn't meaning Florence. She's too divine to be in any marked category. I wonder. Oh, yes, Helen, deathless sort of magnetism, you know. I often wonder what will happen to Florence eventually. Oh, my dear, I'm far too occupied in wondering what's going to happen to me to worry about other people. I always thought your cause was quite clear, Pawnee. However offensive that remark was intended to be, Helen, I shall take it in the most complimentary spirit. I'm sure you will. I expect Florence will just go on and on, then suddenly become quite beautifully old and go on and on still more. Oh, it's too late for her now to become quite beautifully old, I'm afraid. She'll have to be young indefinitely. I don't suppose she'll mind that, but it's trying for David. And fiendish for Nicky. Oh, no, my dear, quite wrong there. I'm sure Nicky doesn't care a damn. It's difficult to tell with Nicky. He's divinely selfish. All amusing people are. Did you hear him play in Paris? Uh, yes. Well? Erratic. One or two things perfect, but he's slovenly. Mm, he only takes things seriously in spurts. But still, he's very young. Do you really think that's a good excuse? No, I'm afraid not. Especially when so much depends on it. What does depend on it? Everything. His life's happiness. Don't be so terribly intense, dear. It's true. I'm quite sure Nicky will be perfectly happy as long as he goes on attracting people. He loves being attractive. Naturally. He's Florence's son. Such an exciting thing to be. You don't believe Nicky's got anything in him at all, do you? Oh, I don't think it matters anyway. I do. But you've got a loving nature, Helen. I always knew it. Nicky hasn't had a chance. Nonsense. He's had everything he wanted ever since the day he was born, and he'll go on wasting his opportunities until he dies. Quite possibly. Well, there you are, then. He may have had everything he wanted, but he's had none of the things he really needs. Are you talking socially or spiritually? <laughs> You're quite right, Pawnee. You wouldn't be so beautifully preserved if you'd wasted any of your valuable time on sincerity. I forgive you for that, Helen, freely. Thank you so much. You must realise one thing. Everyone is sacrificed to Florence. It's as it should be. Of course, she's a couple of hundred years too late. She ought to have been a flaunting, intriguing king's mistress with black page boys and jade bars and things too divine. Oh. Miss Hibbert. Clara! My dears. Oh. Isn't Florence back yet? No, we're waiting for her. Oh. You look harassed, Clara. I am harassed. Why? I'm singing tonight for Laura Tennant. She's giving a dreadful reception at a dreadful house with some dreadful ambassador. How dreadful? No one will listen to me, of course. They'll all be far too busy avoiding the cup and searching for the champagne. What are you singing? Oh, one Gabriel Fauré, two Ronaldo Arno, and an aria. Which aria? Oh, I can't think. My accompanist will know. Oh, I've got a frightful headache. 
Why don't you take off your hat? I dare, I daren't. I've just had my hair done. I, I suppose you haven't got a cachet of you? No, but Florence has, I expect. Preston will know where they are. Ring the bell, Paul. Mm. Oh, my poor Clover. I do hope your singing tonight will justify the fuss you're making this afternoon. Don't be so brutal, Pawnee. Is Gregory going with you? But of course I never sing unless he's there. He gives me such marvellous moral support. Moral? That's hardly the word I should have chosen, dear. Yes, ma'am? Do you know if Mrs Lancaster has any cachet favour anywhere? Yes, ma'am, I think so. Oh, do get me one, Preston. I'm suffering torture. Very well, miss. Preston has such wonderful poise, hasn't she? She needs it in this house. Oh, I do wish Florence would hurry up. I want to borrow her green fan. I've got a new patu frock that positively demands it. Oh, she can't be long now. I suppose I daren't ask Preston for the fan and creep away with it. I shouldn't if I were you. Florence is very touchy over that sort of thing. Well, she promised it to me ages ago. Well, surely there isn't such a desperate hurry. You won't be singing until about half past eleven. Well, my dear, I've got to rehearse. And I don't know a word. Shall I put it down for you here? Ma? Oh, you're a saint, Preston. Thank you a thousand times. Soak it a little first, dear, or you'll choke. I should detest that. Mm. Ah. Now, I must lie down flat. Get out of the way, Helen. Perhaps you'd like us both to go right out of the room and sit in the hall. No, Pawnee. I should never expect the least consideration from you. Lift your head, dear. Uh, there you are. Thank you, Helen, darling. I shall always come to you whenever I'm ill. That will be nice. Thank you, darling. Uh, here we go. Helen, Pawnee. Have you been here long? No, only a few hours. Oh, my dear. I'm so frightfully sorry. We've been held up for ages in the traffic. Davis is a congenital idiot. Always manages to get to a turning just as the policeman puts out his hand. No initiative whatsoever. What's happened to Clara? Has she been run over? No, dear. I've got a frightful head. Poor Nick. You know Tom, don't you? Tom Varian, Mr. Quentin. I'm sure you'll adore each other. How are you? Very well, thank you. How sweet of you to ask me. Is there anything I can do, Clara? Yes, dear. Lend me your green fan for tonight. All right, but you won't get too carried away with it, will you, dear? I should hate the feathers to come out. Does anyone want any tea? No, thanks, dear. Cocktails, then? It's too early. It's never too early for a cocktail. <sighs> I should like to go quite quietly into a convent and never see anybody again, ever. Gregory would be bored stiff in a convent. Oh, we've just been to the most frightful charity matinee. Nothing but inaudible speeches from dreary old actors and leading ladies nudging one another all over the stage. You rang, huh? oh, Cocktails, Preston. And ask Barker to wrap up my green fan for Miss Hibbert to take away with her. Very good. Oh, you're an angel, Florence. I think I'll sit up now. Well, do, dear. Then Tom will be able to sit down. Uh-oh. Well, I, I really do feel most peculiar. You look far from normal, dear. If Tom is rude to me anymore, Florence, I shall burst into tears. Oh, Tom, hmm? give me a cigarette. Oh, here are some. No. Tom has rather a special hearty kind that I adore. <laughs> <laughs> Lend me your lipstick, Helen. Mine sunk down into itself. Here you are. Oh, what a lovely colour. Mm, I look far prettier than I feel. Thank you, Tom Angel. I shan't be able to get down to the house until Saturday evening, Florence. Mm. I'm seeing Gregory off to Newcastle. Why Newcastle? Well, his home's just near there. Isn't it too awful for him? Well, why me the time of your train, won't you? Of course, dear. You're smelling divinely, Florence. What is it? Mm, it is good, isn't it? Narcisse Noir of Caron, I use it. Yes, you would, Borne. Here is the fan, miss. Oh, thank you so much. You are sweet, Florence. The fan gives me such a feeling of security when I'm singing modern stuff. <laughs> I must rush now. Don't you want a cocktail before you go? No, darling. I should only hiccup all the evening. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye. You've been such a comfort. Goodbye, Helen. Yeah. And Pawnee, you will be nicer to me over the weekend, won't you? I shall be so depressed, what with Gregory going away and everything. <laughs> Goodbye, Tom. Toodle. 
I shall dine in bed and give way to every poor. Poor Clara. She eternally labours under the delusion that she really matters. We all do that a little. <laughs> You're awfully cruel to a poor Nick. She upsets my vibrations. Oh, I've taken a sudden hatred to this hat. Oh, there, that's better. Are you going to the new Elaine tonight, either of you? I'm not, but Pawnee is, of course. It's going to be amazing. What a curse, my dear. Marvellous Selwyn Steel, and Nora Dean, and that perfect woman, Lily Burfield. I can't stand her. She always overacts. How can you, Helen? Did you see her in simple faith? Yes, unfortunately. Oh, you really are too tiresome for words. Her technique creaks like machinery. It's sacrilege. She's too, too marvellous. Shall I put them down here, hmm? What do you think about it, Tom? Yes, thanks, Preston. Uh, I've never seen her, Florence. Yes, you have. About three months ago at the comedy. Give Helen her glass, Pawnee. Oh, I don't remember. Don't remember? An artist like that? Good God, it's agony. You look awfully tired at dinner time, Pawnee, if you don't calm down a little. This is special. My own invention. Oh, absolutely delicious. Isn't it, Tom? Mm. But too sweet. Tom, darling, don't be so taciturn. He's always taciturn after a matinee. When's Nicky coming back? Tomorrow, isn't it too divine? He's been away for a whole year, but I saw him for a moment on my way through Paris last month. Has he been working hard? I suppose so, but you know what Nicky is, bless his heart. I heard him play at Yvonne Mirabeau's. Oh, she is a loathsome woman, isn't she? Not as bad as that. She's a half-wit. I can't bear a half-wit. She goes on so dreadfully about things, devastating. Funny Nicky liking her so much. Not only because she keeps on saying how wonderful he is. That always appeals to Nicky. How old is he now? Mm. Twenty-four. <laughs> Isn't it absurd to think I have such a grown-up son? Old General Fenix said last Thursday, but... Oh. Hello, hello. Yes, my dear. How are you? Oh, yes, so am I absolutely worn out. Now, when? Oh, how perfectly marvellous. No, dear, it's a prescription, but I can let you have a little in a jar. No, quite easy. All you have to do is just rub it on at night. <laughs> Don't be silly, not in the least. If you send the car around, that'll be all right. Very well. Goodbye, darling. I give Clara Hibbert ten for stupidity, don't you? A hundred and ten. Ten's the limit. I'd say, Florence, I think I'd be getting along if I've got to be dressed and back here by half past seven. You've got half an hour. Well, it's not very much. The car's outside. Take it and send it straight back. Can it drop me, Florence, dear? I always feel so much richer in your car than anyone else's. Of course, Paul. Oh. Mm, hello. You're speaking. How do you do? Goodbye, Helen. It's been too divine. You bring me up at tea time tomorrow, Connie. Oh, how perfectly sweet of you. <laughs> now, now, really? <laughs> well, naturally, if you persist in saying such charming things. Oh, <laughs> oh what nonsense. Bye, Florence. Oh, it's that awful General Fenwick. Goodbye, Pawnee, dear. You're coming down to the house on Friday. Yes, too lovely. Helen's coming by the five o'clock. You'd better travel together. Perfect. Are you ready, Helen? Hmm? Uh, quite. Uh, you can drop me first, can't you? I'm not as young as I was. Yes, oh, of course. Please forgive me. People rushing in and out. This house grows more like a railway station every day. Now, General, that was a deliberate compliment. <laughs> you are a ridiculous man. Very well. Goodbye. My God, ten for dreariness. Oh, he's not a bad old thing. No, but he tries to be, and that's what's so frightful. Oh, I look like death. Isn't Tom a darling? Yes, dear, without being aggressively brilliant. I'm afraid, Helen, you're getting rather bitter. Nonsense. But it's silly to be sarcastic about Tom. Better than being maudlin about him. I don't know what you mean, dear. I'm not in the least bit maudlin and never have been about anybody. I sometimes wish I could. I'm too hard. Tom will let you down. Let me down? Why? Oh, I don't understand. You're more in love with him than he is with you. Oh, don't be absurd, Helen. It's true. He adores me, worships me. He's never seen anyone like me before in his life. I'm, I'm something strange, exotic. You're more in love with him than he is with you. You're getting on my nerves today, Helen. You do see that I'm right, don't you? 
If you knew some of the things he said to me. I can guess them. That boy was utterly unawakened before he met me. Mm, he's very young. I've taught him everything. Or nothing. Helen, I believe you're jealous. Don't be a fool. I wish I hadn't this fatal knack of seeing through people. How's David? I don't know. Well, you ought to be home soon. Doesn't he ever suspect anything? Oh, of course not. He adores me. It seems so strange not to see you. I'm devoted to David. I'd do anything for him, anything in the world. But he's grown old and I've kept young. Well, he does muddle things up so. I can't help having a temperament, can I? Temperament, no. David's always loved me and never understood me. You see, I'm such an extraordinary mixture. I have so many sides to my character. I adore being at home and running the house and looking after David and well, you Nicky. don't exactly ever do it. Well, Nicky's been away for such ages. Also, one must be in London for the season. You can't expect me to bury myself in the country indefinitely. I shall be there practically all through the spring and the summer. Ooh, lovely tennis parties and cricket weeks and things. Certainly. <laughs> You're a divine creature, Florence. Am I? Oh. Hello. Yes, speaking. It's Ines Juliet. I never went to her recital. Oh. Ines, darling, I never recognized your voice. Didn't you get my note? Oh, no, it was absolutely true. I was in agony. Ines, don't be angry. If you only knew how I long for the sound of your wonderful, wonderful voice. Darling Ines, don't be cruel. Tomorrow, then. I do wish Inez weren't so persistent. You'll never stop encouraging her. Oh, Helen, I'm so tired of everyone. Except Tom. Yes, except Tom. He's such a darling. How do you think he and Nicky will get on? Marvellously. Tom loves music. He says he does. My dear, I took him to that Russian thing the other day and he sat in trance from beginning to end. Poor Nicky. Why do you say that? Because I sometimes feel it. Oh, I wonder why we're such friends. We're so opposite. You don't understand me a bit. I used to think you did, but you've been different lately, unsympathetic. No, I haven't. Yes, you have, over Tom. I believe you're in love with him yourself. No, it isn't that. Anyhow, you can't bear him being in love with me. I don't think he is, really. Oh, I quite realize he was very violently infatuated. That's wearing off a bit now. I'm beginning to see him as he is. No, no, it's not true. You don't understand. We are friends, Florence, though we're so opposite. Do you really know the truth inside you, or is all this shrill vanity real? What's the matter with you? You're ten years older than I am. But when I'm your age, I shall be twenty years older than you. Darling, how deliciously involved. What can you mean by that? I mean, I think it's silly not to grow old when the time comes. Helen! Oh, what on earth is that? Nicky! Mother. Oh, but I'd no idea. I thought you were coming tomorrow. No, today I wrote to you. Oh, I'm terribly, terribly excited. Helen, dear, how are you? Splendid, Nicky. I can't get over your arriving like this. I never realized. Silly. You're looking awfully well. Oh, my. Wonderful as usual. I was talking to George Morrison only last Thursday. The man who wrote that fearful book? It isn't a fearful book. It's brilliant. Anyway, he absolutely refused to believe that I had a grown-up son. My dears, I must fly. Oh, don't go yet, Helen. I must. I'm hours late as it is. We'll be a little later, then. Remember, five o'clock train on Friday. Oh, is she coming down to the house? Divine. Yes, if Florence is still speaking to me. Goodbye. Have you been having a scene? No, dear. She's a darling, Helen. Extremely stupid and tactless sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't feel as though I've been away at all. Oh, I've missed you appallingly. We had such a short time together in Paris. Did you enjoy all my letters? I adored them. So did John Baggett. I used to read most of them aloud to him. He's mad on you. He saw your picture in the Tatler or something and fell in love with it. Is he nice? He's grand. We must all dine at the embassy. When's he coming to England? Not until after Christmas. Oh, you must see my new photographs. They are wonderful. <laughs> oh, it's heavenly being back. Look. 
I don't like that one. Oh, how can you, Nicky? Tom likes that one the best of all. Who's Tom? Tom Varian. He's a dear. You'll like him frightfully. You know, the very nicest type of Englishman. I hate the very nicest type of Englishman. Now, don't be tiresome, Nicky. He's only 24, and they all think so well of him. All who? Well, all his officers and people. He's in the brigade. Oh. Oh, now, that one really is enchanting. Oh, they've got your hair beautifully. Oh, yes, my dear, it's perfect. It is good. Oh, she's sweet, Madam Henderson. She simply won't hear of my paying for these. She says it's quite sufficient to be allowed to exhibit them in the window. Is, is anyone dining this evening? No. Oh, dear, I'd forgotten. I'm dining out with Tom. Oh, I see. Oh, your first night home, too. How perfectly fiendish. What a fool I am to have muddled it up. It doesn't matter, darling. Oh, but it does. I wonder whether we could get another seat. Seat? What for? We're going to the first night of the new Elaine. It's going to be marvellous. Who's in it? Nora Dean and Selwyn Steele. Oh, God. Well, it's silly of you to always jeer at Selwyn Steele. He's a brilliant actor, if only he could get away from his wife. I couldn't bear him tonight anyway. I'm tired. Is father home yet? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, I do feel such a beast. But don't be silly, honestly. I don't mind a bit. I, I know. You have a nice, quiet dinner here and join us at the embassy afterwards. Is it a late night? Mm, yes, they play the most heavenly tune there now. Tom always makes them do it over and over again. I'll put it on. How's Iris? Oh, my dear, don't speak of her. Why, what's she done? She's been absolutely foul. In what way? Everywhere. I never trusted her, luckily. Thank God I've got an instinct about people. <laughs> Listen, isn't this marvellous? She said the most filthy things to Gloria Craig about me. I always knew she was insanely jealous, but there are limits. I loathe being at people's beck and call. Oh, come and dance. I'm sorry, Rowd. I rather liked her. Well, only because she kept on saying how wonderful you were. She doesn't know a thing about music, really. Oh, yes, she does. It's all merely bluff, all that appreciation. But darling... Oddly, you're dancing. Well, it's probably because we haven't danced together for so long. Anyhow, now she's gone off to Monte Carlo with Viola Fenchurch. Silly fool. Nicky, my boy. Hello, father. I thought uh, Florence said tomorrow. The mother muddled it up. You look rather tired. I'm splendid. How's everything? Oh, same as usual. I've made lots of improvements down at the house. David thinks and talks of nothing but the farm. It's beginning to pay a bit. Peterson's an awfully good man. We'll make a grand tour of it on Sunday. And um, have you enjoyed yourself in Paris? Oh, yes, rather. It's a splendid place to work. <laughs> it never struck me that way quite, but still. Sophie de Molinac said Nicky's playing had improved enormously. I'm so glad, Nicky. I've been doing some Spanish stuff lately. I wish I knew more about it. Never mind, Father. Well, uh, come to my room and talk. I can't bear that thing. Oh, Father's such a beast. He never will dance with me. Is the evening news anywhere about? Uh, yes, here. Oh, thanks. I'm so glad you're home again, Nicky. Now, don't forget, uh, come and talk. Oh, David, so much happier in the country. Why on earth doesn't he retire and live at the house for good? Work has become such a habit with him. He's always hated giving up habits. Mother, mm. I've got something rather important to tell you. Oh, darling, how thrilling. What is it? I'm engaged to be married. What? Practically. As much as one can be these days. Nicky. Well, don't look so stricken. Oh, but Nicky, I, I never sort of visualized you being engaged or married or anything. Why not? You're not old enough. I'm 24. Well, you don't look it, but thank God. What do you really feel about it, Mother? <sighs> Darling, I, I hardly know what to say. You, you've sprung it on me so suddenly. Who is she? A girl called Bunty Mannering. Well, what a silly name. It isn't at all. It's very attractive. Is she an actress or a student or what? Neither. She's what is technically termed a lady. Do you think she'll like me? She went mad over your photograph. Which one? The looking out of the window one. 
Ah, oh, now that really is one of the best I've ever had done. She said you had the face of a heroic little boy. What a divine <laughs> thing to say. She does say divine things. She's supremely intelligent. Is she in Paris? No, she came over with me today. Where, where does she live? Well, just round the corner in Carberry Square. Oh, near the Churchingtons. Well, it's her mother's house, but her mother's away just now, so I asked her to change quickly and come on here. Nikki. Oh, why not? I wanted you to see her as soon as possible. It, it's an awful shock, you know. Oh, nonsense, Mother. You're quite excited about it, really. I shall be charming to her. Then she'll adore you at once. Probably too much. I shall be jealous. You'd better both dine here together and come on to the embassy. How old is she? Twenty-three. What does she do? Nothing much. She writes things occasionally. Where did you meet her? Oh, first of all, at a party at Olive Lloyd Kennedy's. I can't bear Olive Lloyd Kennedy if she's a cat. Then I met her again at Marion Fawcett's, a fractal sort of reception affair. She was staying with her. She seems to move exclusively among my worst enemies. Is she pretty? I don't know. I haven't really noticed. Nicky, darling, I really do feel so extraordinary about it. Why extraordinary? It's a milestone, isn't it? You being engaged. A definite milestone. Oh, look at my nose. Oh, I hope she'll like me. I must go and dress. Now, Tom's fetching me at half past seven. Bring her to my room when she comes. But well, don't go for a minute. I must, really. Tom will be furious. Oh, damn, Tom. Oh, Nicky. Now, don't go and take one of your tiresome prejudices against him. All right, I'll try not to. He's frightfully good-looking. Oh? And he adores music. Now then, he Mother... He does, honestly. Good. And he dances beautifully. I shall never stop dancing. And he's so good at games. He sounds adorable. Of course, he needs knowing. So do I. You will make an effort, though, darling, won't you? For my sake. Yes, Mother. And we'll all have a divine time together, Tom and me and you and what's her name? Bunty. Oh, yes, of course, Bunty. Oh, this is her, I expect. Do you feel wonderful about her? Yes. It is thrilling, isn't it, being in love? Yes. Your father was right. You look awfully tired, Nicky. What nonsense. I feel grand. Miss Mannerings. Bunty. You have been quick. I've simply flown. Bunty. Here is Mother. Oh. This is frightfully exciting, isn't it? I've told her. Are you furious? Of course not. Why should I be? Especially now. It's absolutely incredible, you being Nicky's mother. Am I anything like you thought I'd be? Yes, exactly. But I couldn't believe it until I saw you. Take off that perfectly divine cloak and have a cigarette. I've got to rush and dress now because I'm terribly late. But you're dining here with Nicky and joining Tom Varian and me at the embassy afterwards. Tom Varian? Yes. You know him? I did when I was a child, if it's the same one. Nicky, I don't feel extraordinary anymore about it. I'm delighted. Angel. Now, perhaps Bundy would like to come down to the house on Friday for the weekend. Oh, yes, marvellous. That's awfully sweet of you, Mrs. Lancaster. No, you must call me Florence. I can't bear Mrs. Lancaster. I must fly. Tom will be here any moment. That's him on the desk. Yes, it is the same one. Oh, you are too divine. Oh. Hello. Yes, speaking. Elsa, darling, how are you? What? Tonight? Oh, how perfectly heavenly. Of course, I'd adore it. Listen, Nicky is just back from Paris. Can he come too with Bunty Mannering? Yes, he's here. See you tonight, dear. Yeah, Nicky, talk to Elsa. I'm so glad about you and Nicky. It's too wonderful. Hello, Elsa. I had no idea you were in London. Well, I'm terribly thrilled. My dear, you have me. All those lovely tunes you played to me in Paris. How amazing. I am glad. But have you done anything with that tango? You must play it tonight. I want Bunty to hear it. It is perfect, isn't it? Goodbye, dear. Bunty. Mm, what? I'm terribly happy. So am I. Do you remember how we planned all this? Coming home together and breaking it to Mother and everything? Rather. Do you really like her? I adore her. She's a perfect angel. I told her your heroic little boy line, she loved it. It's true, you know, rather defiant, too, laughing at fate. Doesn't Paris seem ages away now? It's a different life altogether. Oh, that nasty little bit of channel, is it an enormous gulf, really? Did you put that dress on on purpose? Mm, perhaps. You are a devil. It's such fun being reminded of things. And such agony, too. Nicky, darling, why agony? It's always agony being in love when I started loving you in that dress. Did you? Don't pretend you didn't know. I suppose one always knows, really. From the very first moment? Yes. A sort of spark. 
Your playing helped a lot. I meant it to. You calculating pig. <laughs> Have a cigarette. All right. I wish we weren't so free. Why? What do you mean? Oh, I feel I should like to elope or something violently romantic like that. Well, there wouldn't be much point in it now, would there? <laughs> Perhaps not. How much do you love me? I don't know. It's fun analysing one's emotions. Marvellous fun. And a comfort, too, when things go wrong. But it kills sentiment stone dead. A good job, too. Oh, you're frankly hard, Bunty. Am I? Much harder than me, really. You've got so much hysteria. Oh, I can't help it. Of course not. It's your temperament. You burst out suddenly. Not so badly as I used to. You're growing older. God, yes. Isn't it foul? Hell, my dear. It's funny how Mother's generation always longed to be old when they were young, and we strain every nerve to keep young. That's because we see what's coming so much more clearly. Wouldn't it be terrible to know exactly? Oh, I feel frightened sometimes. Why? Well, we're all so hectic and nervy. It doesn't matter. It probably only means we shan't live so long. Shut up. Shut up. Mr. Verian. Oh, how are you? I'm Nicky. I came over today instead of tomorrow. Oh. Do you know Bunty Mannering? But Bunty? I say, I am glad. Well, we, we'd better have some cocktails. Yes, sir. Bring us some cocktails. This is jolly. I didn't know what had become of you. I've been living in Paris a good deal. But uh, how many years ago is it? During the uh... war. The last time I saw you, you were at Sandhurst. <laughs> Such a pretty place. You've hardly altered a bit. Well, grown up, of course. Oh, this is most affecting. Uh, Bunty and I used to know one another awfully well. Oh, <laughs> what fun. Nicky. But it is. It's thrilling. Nothing so charming as a reunion. Uh, Nicky and I have been travelling all day. Boats and trains get on his nerves. When the cocktails come, tell Preston to bring mine to me in Father's room, will you? Nicky, don't be so silly. Well, surely it's not silly to want to talk to my aged father after a year's debauch in Paris. I fail to see why you should have the monopoly of reunions. Well, don't be long. Cheerio. Oh, God. What's up? These temperamental musicians. Silly ass. He isn't really. He's only jealous. Why, is he, uh... We're by way of being engaged. What? Why not? What, are you, are you, are you in love with him? Yes, isn't it damnable? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, it seems so funny you being in love with that sort of a chap. What do you mean by that sort of chap? <laughs> mm. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that type seems so unlike you. Type? Yes, you know, up in the air, effeminate. You're more bucolic than you used to be, Tom. Yeah, I say, old girl, it's a bit thick. The cocktails, sir. Oh, will you please take Mr. Nicky's into him in his father's room? Oh. Yes, miss. Is sir, Mrs. Lancaster nearly ready? I think so, sir. Now ask her to hurry, we shall be late. Yes, sir. I can laugh now. Why? <laughs> I've just realised something. What? We shall meet again over the weekend. I are you coming down to the house? Yes. Well, that's splendid. Uh, come for a tramp Sunday morning and we'll talk. What about? Oh, lots of things. Old times. <laughs> Two old times, Tom. Cheerio. Do slow down a bit. It's the pace that's marked on the record. I've never danced well since the war. I don't know why. But Mr. Merle, like your last act was so strong when you came in half mad with fright and described everything minutely. I try to write as honestly as possible. I gave her three for manners, but simply for charm, because I had to be a little lucky. I thought you were rather decent. Oh, I don't know. No, but really, Nicky, his technique completely annihilated his inspiration. Well, not with Debussy and Rebel, with the older masters. Yes, he's probably tired of them. That's so stupid, I think. Oh, oh. My dear Pawnee, it was the most chic thing you've ever seen. But unfortunately, the wrong colour. Marion Ferris had that foro model copied in the most frightful blue. Oh, I believe I should come along. Oh, sorry, sir. It's all right, Tom. Oh, I wonder if you could gouge the cigarette ends out of the holder for me. I will try. I always smoke a pipe when I'm working. Absolutely. I've never been sure. Why, so much 
can never really judge a properly from a recycle, Nicky. Well, not with him, Bunty. He's not dramatic enough. Oh, dramatic, Pianist, make me uncomfortable. You've got to have tea. For me, your tongue grows more venomous every day. <laughs> I had to say something, anyhow, it's true. Especially about her angle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must come next Sunday week, Tom. Thanks awfully, I'd love to, Claire. I'm only singing ballads, but you know what Sunday concerts are. Oh, uh, yes, rather. What's on the other side, Nicky? Um, you've got the cutest ears and eyes and nose. Oh, no, no, no. Well, do put on Spoony Moon in Upper Carolina. No, don't put it on, oh. Nicky. Play something yourself. You always make the gramophone go too quick. Yes, go on, Nicky. All right. Uh, cigarette, Florence. No, thanks, not another. I'm dancing with Tom. Missing one, Tom. Right, eh? What about this one? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Don't overdo the serious well, dramatic stunts. I warn you, I'm no good, Miss Patrick. I'll support you, Nicky. One, one, two, one. Corny. Yes, Helen? Tom Berrien doesn't dance as well as he thinks he does. With that figure, he ought to be marvellous. He's too athletic. Anyhow, I'm sure he's a success at the bath club. Doesn't Florence look astounding? Absolutely. She knows exactly what suits her. Where's David? He went off to his study to smoke. I do wish Florence wouldn't be irritable with him in front of everybody. I felt acutely uncomfortable at dinner. It makes Nicky furious as a rule, but tonight he was too occupied with that stupid little fool Bunty Mannering to take any notice. She's an excellent type. Very average. I only hope nothing will come of Nicky's mania for her. I don't think we need worry. Why? Wait and see, my dear. Uh -huh. Bonnie, mm. and tell me how divinely I sang on Tuesday. You didn't. Oh, ten for cruelty. Don't rob me a pony, Jenny. Are you going to sit by Nicky, Helen? Oh, I, I will. Come on, you're a lazy I old thing. Well. You've just been gossiping with You match, Nicky. Isn't this a marvellous tune? Fascinating. Well, I'm all good. I do want to match. Don't stop. I'll get the other pocket. <laughs> Helen, give her to me. Nicky, dear, don't be so tiresome. I'm sick of playing. Let's have the gramophone again. Here's a light, darling. Thanks, Nicky. Let's have the gramophone. Whose coffee is this? Someone drank mine. I'd hardly If it has no sugar in it, it's mine. It has no sugar. You're dancing abominably, Tom. Yeah. Am I? What's the matter with you? I don't know. I suppose I'm tired. Well, you're not usually tired when you're dancing with me. Oh, Florence, don't nag. How dare you speak to me like that? Uh, I say, Florence, I I'm sorry, old girl. Uh, let's stop the music for a moment and think of something really marvellous to do. No, let's go dance. Oh, no, I'm exhausted. Oh. Uh, well, what was that um, divine game we played coming back from Paris, Helen? Just ordinary clumps, wasn't it? I loathe clumps. clumps. What about the history game? Oh, what is that? No, no, Nicky, it's too intellectual. Well, there's a mahjong set in the drawing room. Oh, how divine. Let's make up a table immediately. I won't be happy until someone gives me a set made entirely of jade. Come on, Bunty. Uh, I can't play it. Ask Tom. You can. You used to play it in Paris with Yvonne. I've forgotten it. Well, you'll soon remember again. Uh, Come along, Clara. No, I insist on Mr. Fairlight learning. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm no good at that sort of thing. You'll be able to put it in one of your plays. Oh, <laughs> Come and watch. It's too thrilling for words. You only one set, Florence. Yes, isn't it maddening? Clara promised to bring hers down, but forgot. Does uh, Bruce Fairlight play bridge? No, I don't think so. Uh, dramatists are such a comfort in a house party, aren't they? Aren't um, you going, Florence? No, Tom. Oh. But please, don't let me stop you going. I'm sure you're dying to be with the others. Say, Florence, I wish you wouldn't go on like that. I don't know what's the matter with you. You've never behaved like this before. I haven't behaved like anything. You've been exceedingly rude to me, both at dinner and afterwards. I wasn't at dinner. Yes, you were. You snapped me up when I said I didn't like Elsie Saunders. You know perfectly well she's a friend of mine. Well, she oughtn't to be after the things she said about me. Oh, you will go on imagining. Nothing of the sort, I know. If you weren't so dense, you'd see to the... Oh, the jealousy I have to put up with. 
I get so tired of it all. So desperately tired. <laughs> Talk about being different. You're different, too. I'm unhappy. Why? Because I hate to see you being put against me. Oh, Florence. No, you'll understand one day. They're all very subtle, but I can see. Nobody said a word to me about you, and they better not try. Why? What would you do? Why, I'd, 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 I'd be furious. Oh. And I'd let them see it, too. John. Yes? I forgive you. Oh. I can't bear you being angry with me. Can't you really? It makes me feel beastly. Come and sit here. That's a lovely dress. It is sweet, isn't it? You always wear wonderful clothes. Do I, Tom? You know you do. Do you remember the very first time we met? Rather. Oh, Oxford's so full of romance, isn't it? It was when you came down. Thank you, Tom, dear. We did have fun. You used to come up to the matinees and I'd motor you back afterwards. Ah, <laughs> ripping. Oh, that reminds me. I got seats for Rolling Stones on Tuesday. Don't forget. But you never said you were going to get them. Well, it doesn't matter. I thought I did. We'd better dine at Claridge's. But, but, but Florence, I, I, I can't come. Why not? I promised to go out. Who with? Mother. Oh, can't you put her off? Oh, it's going to be such a good first night. Well, you see, it's a matter of fact, it's... Rather awkward. I put her off the other day. Oh, well, never mind. We'll go some other night. Hello, Florence. I thought you were in the drawing room. They're playing Mahjong, and there's only one set. I shall break in presently. Uh, let's go and see how they're getting on. Yes, do. Uh, come and play soon. David, don't you think this is a divine frock? Very pretty. You and Helen seem to be very thick at dinner. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing much. Uh, I like Helen. Well, only because she flatters you and listens to everything you say. She doesn't flatter me. But I suppose she was talking about the farm and giving her opinions. We did discuss the farm a little. She doesn't know a thing about it, really. Perhaps not. But it passed the time. What's the matter, darling? Oh, Nicky. Nothing. I, I've got a slight headache. Why don't you go to bed? I can't. It's much too early. Oh, I'm sick of Marjon. Who's playing now? Pawnee and Helen and Clara are trying to teach Bruce Fairlight. He's an awful fool with it. You must get a bunty out of that habit of contradicting everything people say. I don't see why. It's bad breeding. Who cares nowadays? We've all got a right to our opinions. She seems to forget that I'm much older than she is. That's no argument, Mother. It's silly only to remember your age when someone says something you don't like. She's having a bad effect on you. Nonsense. You've changed since Paris. Naturally. You never used to be rude to me. Oh, damn, I'm not rude. Yes, you are. Well, don't start running down Bunty. Oh, stop playing. Stop playing. Nothing, Helen. Bunt is just putting Nicky against me. I knew she'd try to. You must be having a delightful evening, Nicky. Leave the drawing room having rowed with Bunty and come here and row with Florence. Well, oh, Mother's impossible. No different from what she's always been. Well, I haven't realized it before. You haven't been engaged before. I'm hating this house party. Oh, don't say that, dear. It's not kind. You know I don't mean you. Are you very much in love? Yes. No. I don't know. I wonder. It's utterly devastating, anyhow. When did you meet her? About five months ago. What was she doing in Paris? Oh, I don't know. Fooling about. Splendid. She's been studying French literature. Why? Well, she's going to write herself someday. Oh, I see. Helen, do you like her? I can't tell yet. Yesterday was the first time I'd ever set eyes on her. She's wonderfully intelligent. Yes, I'm sure she is. You don't like her? <laughs> I tell you, I'm not sure yet. It's generally the way. One's friends always hate one another. It is difficult for you, isn't it? I should so like you to like her. Very well, I'll try. She's utterly opposite to me in every way. Yes, I see that. But that's as it ought to be, isn't it? It depends. 
And I need a sort of restraining influence terribly. Yes, Nicky. She's awfully good for me. Is she? Yes, she curbs me when I get temperamental and silly. I always felt you needed encouraging more than curbing. Oh, <laughs> aren't you a darling? I mean it. You're wrong, though. I'm all over the place. Anyhow, I do hope you'll be very happy with her. I don't suppose I shall ever be that. I haven't got the knack. Do you work hard? Yes. Really? Frightfully. Liar. <laughs> well, you've seen me in Paris. Studying, studying, all night long until the grey dawn put the guttering candle to shame and my nerveless hands dropped from the keys. Mm. Candles gutter awfully quickly when they're burnt at both ends. Meaning that I look a debauched wreck of my former self? Exactly. If you go on encouraging me at this rate, I shall commit suicide. You do resent anyone taking a real interest in you, don't you? I distrust it. Why? I don't know. I'm not worth it. <laughs> you seem to be suffering from a slight inferiority complex. Not a bit of it. I'm gay and witty and handsome. Oh, Nicky, you're so maddening. Don't be cross, Helen. I'm one of the few people who really know what you're like and you won't give me the credit for it. Do you think you do, honestly? Yes, and I'm exceedingly worried about you. You needn't be. You're sensitive and reserved and utterly foolish. Thank you. I'm beginning to feel beautifully picturesque. And you're scared. Why? What have I been scared about? Would you like me to tell you? No. Why not? Because you're a sentimentalist and you see things that aren't there at all. You're far more sentimental than I. Oh, <laughs> darling Helen. You've got such a lovely mind, like a Christmas card with frosted robins and sheep wandering about in the snow, bleating. All the same, I should give up drugs if I were you. Helen. Well? I don't know what you mean. Do you think I can't see? <laughs> You're being terribly funny, aren't you? You fool, you unutterable little fool. Don't be dramatic, dear. I thought you had common sense. I credited you with more intelligence than that. If you persist in being absurd... Oh, Nicky, don't resist me. Don't fight me. I'm your friend. I wouldn't have said a word if I weren't. You've got to stop it. You haven't gone far yet. There's still time, but God's sake, listen to reason. Oh, shut up, shut up. Don't speak Nicky, so loud. throw it away. Oh. When did you find out? Tonight. You know, when you were playing, but I've guessed for ages. Look, you needn't be frightened, Helen. I only take just the tiniest little bit once in a blue moon. If anything goes wrong, you'll take a lot. Throw it away. What could go wrong? Never mind. Throw it away. I can't. Look out, someone's coming. Hello. Hello, Father. What's the matter? The matter? Why? You look very worried. Oh. Helen and I have just had a grand heart-to-heart -heart talk. We've undone our back hair, loosened our stays and wallowed in it. Oh, I see. We haven't seen one another for so long. It was inevitable. You never came and looked at the farm this morning. I waited for you. I'm awfully sorry, Father. I just went on sleeping. I'll see you later, Nicky. All right. And how do you think your mother's looking? Splendid. Same as ever. Uh, would you like a cigar? Uh, no, thanks, Father. I'm not very good at them. I was just on my way to bed. There are far too many people in the house. You must be used to that by now. You ought to stay down here, you know, during the week and get some fresh air. I've got such millions of things to do in London. Uh, worth doing? Of course. You look as though you needed a rest. You needn't worry about me, Father. I feel splendid. She seems a nice girl. Who? Bunty? Uh, yes. Quiet. Untiresome. Oh, she's a darling. When do you propose to get married? I don't know. The engagement's only a sort of tryout, you know. Oh, I see. I didn't realize that. Uh, I'm so unversed in modern technicalities. With her idea, really, just to tread water for a bit. It sounds an excellent plan. I'm awfully glad you like her. Is she musical? Oh, yes, frightfully. Good. Father, I think I will come down here for a few days and work quietly. If you do that, I'll only go up to London every other day. I, I see so little of you when you're at the flat. Well, that's settled then. I wonder what Mother will say. I'll talk to her. All right. She won't bother about us much. No, I don't suppose she will. I think I'll be getting along to bed now. Good night, my boy. Good night, Father. Nikki, I want to talk to you. Bunty. 
it. All right. I'll have to stop playing for a minute. Won't you let me woo you with a little scribbling? Please stop. I'm unappreciated, that's what it is. I say, Bunty. What? Before you say anything awful to me, I am sorry for being rude just now. So you ought to be. Will you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. I've been irritable all evening. Give me a cigarette, Nicky. Uh, here. <sighs> Thanks. What did you want to talk to me about? Lots of things. Us. Oh, I see. Don't you think it's rather silly being engaged? No, not at all. I do. Just because we bickered a bit tonight? No, not only because of that. Why then? Can't you see? No. Well, we're not very suited to one another, are we? Now, why do you suddenly say that? Because I've only just realised it. I'm sorry. It's not your fault particularly. I'm glad. It's circumstances and surroundings. Oh, that can be altered quite easily. We'll change the shape of the house. We'll take all that wall away and turn that into a studio. You love studios, don't you? Then we'll transform the drawing room into an enormous aviary. It's practically that now. And we'll take that... Shut up, Nicky. I'm only trying to be amenable. Are you really? Yes. I'm putting up a sort of defence, Bunty. I have a feeling that you're going to be unpleasant and I want to establish myself comfortably before you start. I don't want to be unpleasant. Only honest. You won't let the two run together, will you? Oh, you're hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. Yes, I think I am, rather. Anyway, I'm glad it makes it easier. Does it? You're not in love with me, really. You couldn't be. Please don't say that. Why don't you face things properly? One generally has to in the end. I'd like to put it off for as long as possible. That's cowardly. Don't be pompous, darling. You're a great help, I must say. Why should I help to destroy my own happiness? That's self-pity and self-deception. Why are you going on like this? Because I tell you, I've realised the truth. I suppose you've taken a hatred to Mother. No, not a hatred. You don't like her? Not very much. Well, why not? She likes you. She detests me. Oh, nonsense. Why should she? Because I'm young. What a filthy thing to say. It's true. It's nothing of a sort. You're so stupid sometimes. Thank you. Now, don't let's start bickering again. We won't discuss Mother any more, then. You started it. Look, I wish I could make you understand her like I do. I mean, she's awfully irritating, I know, but deep down she's marvellous in spite of everything. Everything? Yes, everything. But don't be a beast, Bunty. Just try to see her point a little, even if you do dislike her. She is terribly silly about being young, I know. But she's been used to so much admiration and flattery and everything always, she, she feels she sort of can't give it up. You do see that, don't you? She hasn't really anything in the least comforting to fall back on. She's not clever, I mean, real kind of brain cleverness. Father's no good, I'm no good. And all the time she's wanting life to be as it was instead of as it is. There's no harm in her anywhere. She's just young inside. Can't you imagine the utter foulness of growing old? Especially if you've been lovely and attractive like she was. The beautiful Flo Lancaster. She used to be known as that, you know. I can remember her when I was quite small coming up to say goodnight to me, looking too perfectly radiant for words. She used to come to the school, too, sometimes. Everyone used to go mad over her. I used to get frightfully proud and excited. I've never heard you talk like this before. I don't think I ever have. I like you better clear-cut, not blurred by sentiment. To describe you as hard would be inadequate. You're my... I can see straight. Can you? Yes, we could never be happy together. Perhaps not. Shall we just finish, then? Certainly. I'm sorry we were too modern to have an engagement ring. You'd have been able to give it back to me so beautifully. It'd be ridiculous. Better than being blurred by sentiment. Oh, my dear, I'm shattered, and I'm going straight to bed, probably for several weeks. Why? Oh, he's coming. Who's coming? Bruce Fairlight. I've been teaching him mahjong. These master brains. Agony, dear. <laughs> interesting, that game. Oh, yes, I thought you'd like it. It's interesting psychologically. The concentration and suspense. Well, yeah. I'm quite right exhausted. Must be the country air. Yeah. Oh, no, it was too mm. lovely I because I, I started with two red dragons oh. in my hand. Oh, oh, I wondered who had them. Oh, one more two, Nicky, before we go to bed. Yes, just one. I'll play I Love You. Such a romantic tune, don't you think, Bunty? Yeah. Do. What time is everyone getting up in the morning? The ten o'clock's the best, Helen. We'll have breakfast at nine downstairs. I don't know. But in London, I can never do more than nibble a piece of thin toast, and whenever I'm aware, I eat enormously. How very peculiar. 
Your tone revolts me, Nicky. You must never be irascible with your old friends. I haven't got any. Nicky. Sorry, Helen. I don't know what's the matter with Nicky. He's been in a vile temper all the evening. His first weekend at home, too. Oh, such a pity, Mother, when so much trouble has been taken to make me happy and cosy. Uh, come and dance, Bunty. No, not now, Tom. Dance with him, Bunty. Chaps must have exercise. You dance with Bunty Pawnee and I'll dance with Tom. Come on. Come on. Right, sir. The great thing in this world is not to be obvious, Nicky. Over anything. <laughs> Oh, oh, what do you think about mischievous passion, Fairlight? I never read novels on principle. Well, you must read this. It's colossal. Don't be led away by Pawnee, Mr. Fairlight. He has no discrimination. I tell you, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Nonsense. There are times, Helen, when I could willingly see you dead. My feet. <laughs> A little slow, Nicky. For heaven's sake. Oh. How's that? I think... You'd better go to bed, Nicky. We're all going, anyhow. Not yet, please, Mummy dear. I'm having such a lovely time. Take it off, Pony. I always knew the continent was fatal for the young. Nicky's upset. It's my fault we're not engaged anymore. Why? What's happened? Nothing happened, Florence. It was never very serious, really. I had a feeling that it was, Bunty. You were wrong, Helen. Well, uh, I must say it's all been rather abrupt. It's better to finish things off at once, cleanly, if you're not quite sure, don't you think, Florence? Well, I'm sorry, Bunty, but if you feel like that, there's nothing more to be said. I wouldn't have mentioned it at all, only you all seem to be blaming him for being irritable. Poor Nicky. I really must go off to bed now. Oh, I'm so tired. Good night, Florence, dear. Good night, mm -hmm. Clara. Breakfast at night. Mm -hmm. Have you got books and everything you want? Yes, thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night. Good night Clara. Oh. Tom, be an angel and fetch me a glass of milk. It's in the drawing room. All right, Florence. Oh, come on up, Florence. I'm dead. Oh, so am I, Helen. Will you turn out the light, Pawnee, when you come? With beautiful precision, dear. Oh, tell Tom to bring my milk up to me, somebody. All right. Good night, Mr. Fairlight. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Lancaster. Good night, Florence. Oh, well, I, I suppose we'd all better go up, Miss Mannering. Oh, I don't feel I could sleep yet, Mr. Fairlight. Hello. Where's Florence? Gone up to bed. Will you take her milk to her? Um, uh, what's become of Nicky? We're in the smoking room, I think. Uh, good night, Miss Mannering. Good night, Miss Fairlight. Well, I shall come too. Good night. Good night, Pony. Uh, when you're writing, Fairlight, do your characters grow as you go along? No, I think each one out minutely beforehand. You are too intriguing. So, you've broken it off already, Bunty. Yes, Tom. I didn't know you were going to do it so soon. It's better to get things over. What did he say? Too much. Was he furious? Oh, what does it matter? Don't let's go on about it. And it's all damned awkward. What? The whole thing. You're rather scared, aren't you? Hmm? Well, no. No, not exactly. Now that I've got you to back me up. <laughs> I shall be glad when we're out of this house. So shall I. If I hate the atmosphere. I don't know how I've stood it for so long. You didn't notice it until I came, any more than I noticed Nicky's atmosphere until you came. It's queer, isn't it? We're reverting to type, don't you see? What do you mean? Never mind, it's true. Why, do you, you think I'm being a cad to Florence? Yes. I do, really. Well, Bunty, you said this But I didn't see how you could help yourself. Neither I do. It's frightfully difficult. But it's not altogether your fault any more than it would have been mine if I had married Nicky. Oh, one gets carried away by glamour and personality and magnetism. They're beastly, treacherous things. Oh, you are wonderful. Oh, to be silly. Well, you're so cool and clear and you see everything. I'm sorry for Nicky. Oh, damn Nicky. Oh, Tom. Why? What's up? You're so dead set. But you're worth ten of him any day. What's the use of a chap like that, hmm? Doesn't do anything, he's a play the piano. He can't play any games, he's always trying to be funny. Shut up, Tom, you're being rather cheap. I haven't reverted to type so quickly that I can't see some of the things I'm missing. Well, I wish I knew what you were talking about. Oh, God, I feel so miserable. <laughs> I say, Bunty, for heaven's sake. Oh, don't, don't. Give me my shoes. 
Uh, I say, old girl, hadn't you better go to bed? You're all raw. It's that beastly thing. I really never... Oh, shut up, Tom, shut up. Bunty, stop crying. Yes, dear. Please. Please, stop crying. I can't find my hanky. Here's mine. Yes, Florence? What does this mean? Sorry, Florence, I... I... You utter can. Look here, I should like to Be say... quiet, mind your own business. <laughs> What's the matter? Anybody hurt? No, not hurt. I banged my hand, that's Liar. all. Liar. Mother, don't be so stupid, Florence, I really... Don't, don't speak to me, Tom. Mother, not now, not now. It's all wrong. Control yourself. Bunty? Bunty, go to bed. Please. Stop. I want an explanation, please. How dare you speak to me like that? Get out of my house. Get out of my house. This is disgusting. Oh, I say, Florence. Get out of my house. I shall leave first thing in the morning. It's much too late tonight. Oh. Tom. Yes, Florence? You kissed her. You kissed her. I saw you. Yes. In this house. Yes, Florence. I... Apologize. Apologize. You have been in contempt. Never speak to me again. Never touch me again. I hate you. Look here, Florence. I'm, I'm, I'm desperately sorry. You say I'm afraid I love her. You dare stand there and say that to me. It's incredible. After all I've done for you, after all we've been to one another. Love. You don't know what it means. You have lied to me all these months. It's contemptible, humiliating. Get out of my sight. Very well. Goodbye. Florence, what is the use of going on like that? I wish I were dead. It's so cowardly to give way utterly as you're doing. I don't care, Helen, I don't if care. If you don't face things in this world, they only hit you much harder in the end. He loved me, you taught me. Never, he hadn't got it in him. After all I've done for him to go, to go to Bunty. If it hadn't been Bunty, it would have been someone else. Don't you see how inevitable it was? How dared they? Here, in this house. Well, that's a little thing. That doesn't matter at it all. It does, it does. Florence, sit up and pull yourself together. I think I'm going mad. Not a bit of it. You're just thoroughly hysterical. Oh. Give me some water. Yes, all right. What time is it? Ten past one. Don't go to London by the early train, Helen. Stay and come up with me in the car. Very well. Oh, thank God you were here. I wish I'd known what was happening. I might have done something. Here you are. Thank you. What can I do to get him back? Don't be silly. What can I do? What can I do? Do you mean to say you'd take him back after tonight? No, never. Not if he crawled to me. Never. Well, then, make up your mind definitely. Never to see him again, whatever happens. Yes, I will. Why don't you go to bed now? I couldn't sleep. Put it all out of your mind. Make an effort. I can't. I'm too unhappy. Think of Nicky. Nicky's young. That doesn't make it any better for him. He'll get over it in the long run. The long run never counts at the moment. But he wasn't in love. Really? As much as you were here capable of it. Well, he's well rid of her. She'd never have appreciated him properly. She hasn't the intelligence. Oh, I don't agree with you there. She's intelligent right enough. A treacherous little beast. Yes, far-seeing. Are you standing up for her? Do you think it was right of her to take Tom away from me? Yes, quite right. Helen! To do her justice, she didn't deliberately set herself out to get him away from you at all. She discovered that in spite of the somewhat decadent years, Tom was still her type. 
and likely to remain so. So with common sense, she decided to shove Mickey forthwith and go with him. Her type, indeed. Yes. She'd have been quite a nice girl, really. She'd been left alone, not allowed to go to Paris and get into the wrong set. You are extraordinary, Helen. Do you realise that you're making excuses for the girl who's betrayed your best friend? But don't be utterly absurd. I'm not making excuses, and anyhow, she hasn't betrayed you. She hardly knows you in the first place. She's just followed her instincts, regardless of anyone else's feelings. As you've done thousands of times. Helen, you're being horrible to me. I'm not. I'm trying to make you see. You're battering your head against silly, cast iron delusions, and I want to dislodge... Helen, I'm so unhappy, so desperately unhappy. Yes, but not because you've lost Tom. It's something far deeper than that. What, then? You're on the wrong track. And have been for years. I don't understand. You won't understand. Oh, my eyes are sore. It's so lovely, this. And so refreshing. I think I'll go to bed now. No, wait a little longer with me, please, Helen. Just a few minutes. It's so hot in here. Well, open the window, then. Yes, all right. <laughs> do you ever do this? Do what? Put scent on a cigarette. It's divine. Wonderfully clear night. You can see the hills right across the valley. The moon's quite strong. I chose this room in the first place because the view was so lovely. Do you ever look at it? Of course I do, often. It's been raining. I do wish you'd throw that cigarette away. It spoils the freshness. And it's soothing me, calming my nerves. I do wish I could help you, really. You are helping me, darling. You're being an angel. Don't talk so emptily, Florence. I'm worth more than that. I don't know what you mean. It sickens me to see you getting back so soon. Getting back? Yes, your usual worthless attitude of mine. Helen. A little while ago, you were really suffering for once. In a way, I was glad because it showed you were capable of a genuine emotion. Now you're glossing it over, smarming it down with your returning vanity. <clears throat> Soon you won't be unhappy anymore, just vindictive. No, don't go on at me like that. I'm too wretched. Florence, dear, forgive me, but it's true. And I don't want it to be. Nicky. Helen, I want to talk to Mother, please. What is it? All right, Nicky. I couldn't sleep. Florence, dear, good night. No, no, Helen, don't go yet. I must. Helen, stay with me. Please go. I can't stay, Florence. It's impossible. I don't know what you mean by coming here and ordering Helen out of my room. I'm sorry, Mother. I felt I had to talk to you alone. At this hour of the night, you're mad. No, I'm not. I think I'm probably more unhappy than I've ever been in my life. No, you're young. You'll get over it. I hope so. I knew the first moment I saw her what sort of girl she was. Oh, Mother. It's true. I, I had an instinct about her. It's all been rather a shock, you know. Yes, dear, I know, I know. But you mustn't be miserable about her. She isn't worth it. Don't, Mother. Listen, Nicky, go back to bed now, there's a dear. My head's splitting. I can't yet. Well, take some aspirin. That'll calm your nerves. I'm afraid I'm a little beyond aspirin. No, I don't want you to think I don't sympathize with you, darling. My heart aches for you. I know so well what you're going through. Do you? It's agony, absolute agony. But you see, it will wear off. It always does in time. Nicky, please go now. I want to talk to you. Tomorrow. We'll talk tomorrow. No, now, now. You're inconsiderate and cruel. I've told you... My head's bursting. I want to sympathize with you, too, and try to understand everything as well as I can. Understand everything? Yes, please. I don't know what you mean. Will you tell me things as though I was somebody quite different? What kind of things? Things about you, your life. Oh, really, Nicky, you're ridiculous asking me to tell you stories at this hour. Mother, sit down quietly. I'm not going out of this room until I've got everything straight in my mind. Nicky, I... Tom Berrien has been your lover, hasn't he? Nicky, how dare you? Now, keep calm. It's our only chance. Keep calm. How dare, how dare you speak to me like that? Suggest such a thing. It's I... true, isn't it? Go away, go it's away. It's true, isn't no, it? No, no. It's true, isn't it? No, I tell you, no, no, You're no. You're lying to me, Mother. What's the use of that? You're mad, mad. 
Does father know? Go away. Does father know? Your father knows nothing. He doesn't understand me any more than you do. Then it's between us alone. I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Mother, don't go on like that. It's useless. We've arrived at a crisis. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we can't escape from it. I know we're neither of us very strong-minded or capable, and we haven't very much hope of coming through successfully, but let's try. It's no good pretending anymore. Our lives are built up of pretenses all the time. For years, ever since I began to think at all, I've been bolstering up my illusions about you. People have made remarks, not realizing that I was your son, and I pretended they were inspired by cattiness and jealousy. I've noticed things, trivial, incriminating little incidents, and I've brushed them aside and not thought any more about them because you were my mother, clever and beautiful and successful. And naturally, people would slander you because you were so beautiful. And now I know Nikki, that they I, were right. I implore you, go away now, leave me alone. No, I can't. No, you're cruel, cruel to torment me. I don't want to be cruel. Well, go to bed then and we'll talk everything over quietly another time. It is true about Tom Berrien, isn't no, it? No, no. But we're on awfully dangerous ground. I'm straining every nerve to keep myself under control. Now, if you lie to me and try to evade me any more, I won't be answerable for what might happen. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm frightened. Nicky, darling, I... Don't touch me, please. Have a little pity for me. Was Tom Berrien your lover? Yes. I want to understand why. He loved me. But you, did you love him? Yes. It, it was something you couldn't help, wasn't it? Something that's always been the same in you since you were quite young? Yes, Nicky, yes. And, and there have been others, too, haven't there? I won't be cross-questioned anymore. I won't. I, I wish you'd try to understand. I'm not blaming you. I'm trying to help you, to help us both. What good can all this possibly do? Clear things up, of course. I can't go on any more half-knowing. Why should that side of my life be any concern of yours? But, Mother! I'm different from other women, completely different. And you expect me to be the same. Why can't you realize that with a temperament like mine, it's impossible to lead an ordinary humdrum life? You're not a boy any longer. You're a man. I'm nothing. I've grown up all wrong. Well, it's not my fault. Of course it's your fault, Mother. Who else's fault could it be? Your friends, the people you mix with. It wouldn't matter who I mix with if only I had a background. You've got as much money as you want. You've got your home. Home? That's almost funny. There's no peace anywhere. Nothing but the ceaseless din of trying to be amused. David never complains. I don't suppose you've looked at Father during the last few years or you wouldn't say that. He's perfectly happy because he's sensible. He lives his own life and he doesn't interfere with mine. It must be your vanity that makes you so dreadfully blind and foolish. Understand this once and for all. I won't be spoken to like this. You've had other lovers besides Tom Berrien, haven't you? Yes, I have. I have. Now then... Well, anyhow, that's the truth at last. Nicky, don't be angry. Please, Nicky, don't be angry with me. I'm not angry a bit. I realize that I'm living in a world where things like this happen. They've got to be faced and given the right value. If only I'd had the courage to realize everything before, it wouldn't be so bad now. It's the sudden shock that's thrown the whole thing out of focus for me. But I mean to get it right. Please help me. I don't know what to do. It's your life, and you've lived it as you've wanted to live it. Now, that's fair. Yes, yes. You wanted love, always. Passionate love, because you were made like that. It's not your fault. It's the fault of circumstances and civilization. Civilization makes rottenness so much easier. We're utterly rotten, oh, both of us. Oh, don't, don't. Well, how can we help ourselves? We swirl about in a vortex of beastliness. <sighs> This is a chance, don't you see? To realize the truth, our only chance. Oh, Nicky, do stop. Go away. But don't keep on telling me to stop when our only hope is to hammer it out. Oh, overwrought. It isn't as bad as you think. Isn't it? No, no, of course it isn't tomorrow morning. You'll see things quite differently. You haven't understood. Yes, I have. I have. You haven't understood. Oh, my God. You haven't understood. You're building up silly defenses in your mind. I'm overwrought. Tomorrow morning I shall see things quite differently. Oh, that's true, Mother. That's the tragedy of it. You won't see. Tomorrow morning I shall see things differently. And all this will seem unreal, a nightmare. The machinery of our lives will go on again and gloss over the truth as it always does. And our chance will be gone forever. Chance? What chance? What are you talking about? What I chance? must make you see somehow. Oh, you're driving me mad. Oh, have patience with me, please. How can please. I have patience with you? You exaggerate everything. No, I don't. I wish I did. Listen, let me explain something to you. Very well, go on. You're setting yourself up in judgment on me, your own mother. No, I'm not. You are, you are. Let me speak. 
You don't understand my temperament in the least. Nobody does. Look, you're deceiving yourself. Your temperament's no different from thousands of other women, but you've been weak and selfish and given away all on the line. Let me speak, Agent. What's the use? You're still pretending, Mother. You're building up barriers between us instead of helping me to break them down. What are you accusing me of having done? Can't you see yet? No, I can't. If you're preaching morality, you've no right to. That's my affair. I've never done any harm to anyone. Look at me. Why? What do you mean? You've given me nothing, all my life, nothing that really counts. Now you're pitying yourself. Yes, with every reason. You're neurotic and ridiculous. Just because Bunty broke off your engagement, you come and say wicked, cruel things to me. You forget what I've seen tonight, Mother. I don't care what you've seen. I've seen you make a vulgar, disgusting scene in your own house and on top of that humiliate yourself before a boy half your age. The misery of losing Bunty faded away when that happened. Everything is comparative after all. I didn't humiliate myself. You ran after him up the stairs because your vanity wouldn't let you lose him. It isn't that you love him. That would be easier. You never love anyone. You only love them loving you. All your so-called passion and temperament is false. Your whole existence has degenerated into an endless, empty craving for admiration and flattery. And then you say you've done no harm to anybody. Father used to be a clever man with a strong will and a capacity for enjoying everything. I can remember him like that. And now he's nothing. A complete non-entity because his spirit's crushed. Well, how could it be otherwise? You've let him down consistently for years. And God knows I'm nothing for him to look forward to. But I might have been if it hadn't been for you. Don't talk like that. Don't, don't. It can't be such a crime being loved. It can't be such a crime being happy. You're not happy. You're never happy. You're fighting fighting all the time to keep your youth and your looks because you can't bear the thought of living without them as though they mattered in the end. What does anything matter, ever? That's what I'm trying to find no, out. I'm still young inside. I'm still beautiful. Why shouldn't I live my life as I choose? You're not young or beautiful. I'm seeing for the very first time how old you are. It's horrible. Your silly fair hair and your face all plastered and painted. Nicky, Nicky, stop. 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 Mother. Oh, no, go away. Go away. I hate you. Go away. Mother, sit up. Get out of my room. I don't ever want to see you again. You're insane. You've said wicked, wicked things to me. You've talked to me as if I were a woman off the streets. I can't bear any more. I can't bear any more. I have a slight confession oh, to make. Confession? Yes. Go away. Go away. Look. What do you mean? What is it? Don't you know? Nicky, it isn't. You haven't. Why do you look so shocked? Oh, my God. What does it matter? Well... That doesn't make it any better. Nicky, promise me. Oh, promise me you'll never do it again, never in your life. It's frightful, horrible. It's only just the beginning. What can I say to you? What can I say to you? Nothing under the circumstances. What do you mean? It can't possibly matter now. Matter? But it's the finish of everything. You're young. You're just starting on your life. You must stop. You must swear never to touch it again. Swear to me on your oath. Nicky, I'll help you. I'll help you. You? Oh. How could you possibly help me? Nicky, Nicky. Shut up. Shut up. Don't touch me. Nicky, Nicky. I'm trying to control myself, but you won't let me. You're an awfully rotten woman, really. Oh, Nicky, stop. 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 Leave go of me. And as to all this, it's bottles and creams and scent. Oh, oh Nicky. Now then. Now then. You're not going to have any more lovers. You're not going to be beautiful and successful ever again. You're going to be my mother for once. It's about time I had one to help me before I go over the edge altogether. Nicky, Nicky. Promise me you'll be different. You've got to promise me. Yes, yes, I promise. I love you, really. That's why it's all so awful. No, not awful. Don't say that. I love you, too. Oh, I wish I were dead. It doesn't matter about death. But it matters terribly about life. I know. Promise me you'll be different. 
Promise me you'll be different. Yes, yes, I'll try. We'll both try. Yes, dear. <laughs> oh, my dear. In The Vortex by Noel Coward, the part of Florence Lancaster was played by Joan Greenwood and Nicky by Richard Bryars. Helen was played by Margaret Robertson and Pawnee by Rolf Lefevre. Tom Varian, Anthony Jackson and Bunty Mannering, Alexa Romanus. David Lancaster, Duncan McIntyre, Clara Hibbert, Marjorie Westbury, Preston, Betty Hardy and Bruce Fairlight, Alan Dudley. The pianist was Wilfred Parry. The production was by H.B. Fortuyn. Now, we have nearly nine minutes before home this afternoon at 4.45. So here is a piano piece by Faure. The Nocturne uh, number seven in C sharp minor, and is played on this record by Kathleen Long.
Nocturne No. 7 in C-sharp minor by Faure, played by Kathleen Long. At this time of the year, there's increasing interference from continental stations on our medium wavelengths. To defeat this interference, the BBC has built an extensive network of VHF stations. VHF stands for Very High Frequency, and it's a system which is virtually free from interference. So the remedy is a VHF set. Take professional advice about installing it because you may need a good outside aerial. If you don't wish to have a large receiver, there are many VHF portables which will serve the purpose just as well. And remember that if local radio has started or is coming to your area, you'll only be able to hear your own local station on VHF. Given the right set and the right aerial, your listening this winter to radios 2, 3 and 4 can give you far more enjoyment. At 8.30 tonight in the home service, we're broadcasting a dramatisation of Robert Graves' famous novel, I, Claudius, in which Marius Goring plays the seemingly foolish, crippled, stammering clown who is nevertheless clever enough to survive the violent reign of three Caesars to become emperor himself and remain emperor for 14 years. And that's I, Claudius, in Radio 4, the home service, at 8.30 tonight.